Hey everybody, this is GliderCat and it's time to play. Today we're going to start a new Let's Play series on a game called Aquatico. This is kind of an underwater city builder. Looks very cool. It uh, releases on Steam tomorrow as I record this. And what is that? Today is the 11th. So on the 12th, this is going to be available on Steam. And as I record this, there's also a free demo available. So you can check that out. Let's jump into a new game. Uh, subsurface colony. I think we get to pick a name here. Let's uh, do that. Let's call this Puddleton. Since we're underwater, choose a banner. I'm going to go for this gear or sprocket. And then color. How about... Oh, how about that bright sprocket? All right, next... Okay, we've got a selection of maps here. Let's see, Shallow Reef, Reef is Normal, Wasteland, Deep Passage. Not sure if these are different sizes or not. Let's go for, that looks kind of like a lot of space. We might be able to build a big colony there. Let's try this, Submerged Prairie. Difficulty Normal, continue. Uh, I'll go with all the defaults. Looks like we start out with two people for our population, high resources. Medium or normal events and disasters and starting month, April. I'm not sure what the starting month, that may have to do with um, weather events or something. Continue. We were bound for the stars, but the stars had other plans for us. <clears throat> Our cities were bright. We were walking in the sunlight. And then, Nimrod struck. Arriving from the stars, the asteroid obliterated our world. Radiation spread, the climate changed, and sea levels increased. The oceans were our demise, but now they're a chance for survival. Beneath the waves, we will find a new home, and you will be there to build it. All right, very cool. Let's jump in. Here we go. Okay, choose a location for your people to build the subsurface base. All right. Let's look through here. And they're giving us a grid. I've got colorblind mode turned on. So these colors may look a little different if you play the default settings. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to plunk it down anywhere, I guess. Let's see. Fertile area. Do we want to be near anything? Maybe just towards the middle of the map is reasonable. Let's go right here. Boom. Okay, welcome, Sea Mayor. Leading an underwater colony is a great responsibility, but we at the New Atlantis have no doubt you can handle it. Going underwater is our last chance of survival since the asteroid hit and made the surface uninhabitable. Focus on the production of plastics and for construction, fuel for heating, and food for our people. The cold winter currents will strike soon. Build a beacon of civilization and give hope to mankind in these hard times. Follow the tutorial to learn how to build and organize your underwater colony. All right, we shall do. Okay, hover over the highlighted icons to continue. This is your resources bar. It displays the statuses of the most important resources, such as credits, food, and construction materials. So that's up here on the far left. Credits, we start out with 2,800, 300 food, 70 medicine, no basic goods, looks like. And we have some batteries here, too. 200 batteries. All right. Electricity, crude oil, fuel, and oxygen levels are an important part of the proper functioning of your colony. These are transported via connected pipelines from appropriate production buildings to housing domes, other production buildings, etc. Okay. Electricity, crude oil, fuel, and oxygen. That looks like those are our resources. Hover over highlighted icons. Okay. Keep track of your resident count drone count political influence and overall people's needs and happiness okay influence is three 12 drones two people so far uh, i'm not sure what the zero is maybe how many are on expedition or something happiness 100 looks like a bunch of criteria for happiness there all right game speed okay pause yeah 
pause one okay pretty standard stuff camera controls yep all this standard stuff that we're pretty much used to here i think okay use the game toolbar to give specific orders to your workers or drones and also place available buildings for them to construct it says open the buildings production open the production buildings group through the game toolbar okay down here boom production buildings food production Select and place a gatherer's place on the seabed. Select this guy. Let's zoom in a bit. And I guess we can put this just anywhere. Let's see if we can put it on top of these uh, little sponge things. Yep, can. Tutorial will continue after construction is complete. We're at step 7 of 28 in the tutorial. I'm going to fast forward the speed here. We can see there's our two people here, kind of in the mechs or whatever. Mech suits. And then we've got a bunch of drones kind of wandering around. And it looks like they are in the process of building this. Okay, I'll speed up time some more. Yeah, they're clearing the ground. Okay, and here this guy's going to kind of 3D print our building. Slow it back down. Okay, open the jobs board J and check automatically assign workforces. Almost every building requires a workforce assigned to it to operate properly. On the jobs board panel, you can assign workers, workforce members to a certain job or profession. You can choose to assign them manually or automatically. All right, J, automatically assign the workforce. We'll go with that for now. Maybe when the colony gets big, we'll start playing around with these. Look at all these professions though, tons. Boom. Find the most efficient location and place a sponge collector on the seabed. You can see the efficiency on the hint when you are placing the sponge collector on the seabed. Search for sponges in the surroundings and find the best suitable spot. Sponges in the vicinity are marked blue. Okay. Follow along here. Sponge collector. Central hub of our sponge gathering activities plants and gathers sponge essential in plastic production. Okay, so this automatically regenerates sponge. It's not just gathering them, it's also planting them. So that is cool. All right, we can see in the pop-up there's a work efficiency. So let's see if we can get near a bunch of sponge. That's 123. That's pretty darn good. Anything better than 123 for efficiency? Ooh, there, is there a bunch over here? No. Uh, oh. 123, I thought I saw 125. I think that's as high as you can get. There it is, uh, 125, right there. Boom, let's put it here. Point. Okay, tutorial will continue after construction is half complete. Okay, interesting, I'm gonna fast forward the speed then we'll bring it back down. This one might take a while, it's a little ways from the base. Are our drones gonna go over there? These look like maybe these are the extra people. Is there someone working over here? Yeah, there's a drone just now leaving. So first they clear out the area, then I think they kind of 3D print it. I'm at eight times speed. Okay, here's our guy 3D printing. Okay, I'll slow down this by speed again. Select and place an oil platform on the seabed. To find the best suitable location, toggle the grid view and look for crude oil rich areas the orange colored cells. All right. Oil platform. G for grid view. Here we go. And orange. Is that this here? Yeah, work platform. Looks like 100% is the best we're going to do here. Okay. Let's try and get up near. Actually, we probably want to be. Yeah, we want to be at 100 but just at 100, you know what I mean? So we can save as much, put as many of these here as we can. That looks good. Okay, select and place a fuel refinery on the seabed. Crude oil needs to be refined into fuel so your residents can use it for heating. This is done in fuel refineries. All right, we got a fuel refinery here. I'm wondering where is the best space to put this kind of stuff. Let me, let's see. Well, this show, okay, here's the colors. Can't build, 
ore rich area, fertile area. I guess there's no kind of non-valuable area to place things. So we'll just plop it down here and not worry about stepping on some other area. There's like two little arrows on each building. I don't know if I need to keep a path open. So I'm going to do that. Let's pop this guy right there. Okay, open the infrastructure group through the game toolbar. Certain buildings need to be interconnected via a combined pipeline system to be able to work. Pipelines are used to transport crude oil, fuel, electricity, and oxygen around your underwater colony. Okay, they're giving us the clues here. Okay, select the pipeline in the infrastructure group, connect the oil platform and the fuel refinery with the same pipeline. All right, we got that selected. I think we just need to connect these two guys together. So let's do it. Just boom. Okay, soon you'll need a plastics factory, which requires sponges, among other resources, to be constructed. It's a good time to boost your sponges production. Click here to move the camera to the sponge collection. Okay, boom. And they want us to, I believe, it says select the marked sponge collector building and pay for the production boost upgrade. So select it. Here's our options. Production boost, done. What did that cost us? Probably some credits. Uh, production is now up 20% on sponges. And we have, how many do we have? 90 so far. We produced 120 per month and monthly we're using 20. So we should be in good shape there. Okay, tutorial will continue after the construction is complete. Oh, does that have a construction to it? Oh no, that's waiting for this guy to finish, I guess. Let's go ahead and speed things up. Okay, we're running at eight times speed. Okay, there's our oil platform being built. Looks pretty cool. I can turn off the grid view. Maybe we'll see it better, yeah. Pretty sweet looking. Oh man. Yeah, that looks kind of cool. Neat. Okay, we're still at eight times speed, just waiting for things to get built. All right, there's our fuel refinery. Okay, connect and select and place a plastics factory on the seabed. Connect your plastics factory to the existing pipeline. All right, plastics factory somewhere over here. You and you. And how do we want to do this? I'm going to put this guy right here. And then we need to connect it up, right? Grab the pipeline. see if we can make this work. I'm going to stretch our pipeline out this way and then just connect up to this guy real easy. Boom. So those three buildings are now connected. Harvest the designated resources. Drag a box around the area you want to harvest. Some materials can be found and scavenged in your immediate surroundings, such as plastics, iron, stone, and sponges. To gather them on the game on the game toolbar, left mouse click to open up the clear buildings and resources and select gather stone, iron, or plastic option. Click here to move the camera to the marked resources. Okay, boom. Okay, they want us to gather this stuff, whatever that is, plastic, cool. And down here in the bottom right, gather resources, gather stone, iron, and plastic. And then we just, I think, just click and drag. Boom. Okay, so we've got a bunch of plastic here marked for harvesting. Here come a bunch of idle drones and our little colonists helping out too. <laughs> Doing a little dance to uh, harvest plastic. Nice. Okay, open the research screen with you and research the tidal turbine. Let's do it. I guess we just click it. Cost 20 credits. It says allows us to build a turbine that uses p the power of the sea currents to make electric energy. Takes five days. We'll click it. Five days goes by pretty quick. 
I'm at eight times speed. Let me slow it down a little bit. Okay, select and place a dome on the seabed. Houses and civic buildings can only be built inside well-pressurized hubs called domes, which can sustain a normal everyday life. Okay, we'll take it. Domes down here. Looks like we have three available in the game. A big, a medium, which we have not unlocked yet, and then a small. So let's take that guy. Where's our hub? Way over here, right? Um, yeah, I don't know where the optimal placement for this stuff is. If we should be, like, saving the fertile area and not using that. Can't build abyss. Buildings are occupied. Fertile area. Yeah. I guess we just got to plunk it down anywhere. I'm going to put it down. Oh, you know what? This can overlap, can't it? The dome is actually... Got some height to it. I think this can be nestled to overlap with the other buildings here. Let's try that. It's a little goofy to see, but yeah, nice. Okay, tutorial will continue after the construction is complete. Okay, I'll kick up the speed back to eight times. And then I think once the tutorial's done, we can continue on with this colony. And keep on moving. I did go through this tutorial one time just before uh, starting to record this episode. Okay, toggle between the ground and dome view with the tab key. You've constructed your first dome. It is now, I'm going to slow down this time here. It is now possible to construct buildings in the dome view. Keep in mind that this, that available construction options are different in each view. Okay, so tab, boom. This is kind of building in the dome. Right, which is elevated from the ground. And then this is kind of building outside the dome, right? Which is at ground level. Okay, select and place two houses inside your dome. So here's our dome. It's not very big. It looks okay, but there's bigger ones apparently coming. So build two houses. There's housing. Uh, looks like we've got a hotel. House four, three, two, and house one is the only one that we have unlocked, I think. Yeah, research house too. Okay, this one we can build. A standard dome-based household that can host up to four citizens. They want us to build two houses. I'm going to put them at the far corners here. Boom. Boom. That way I know I'm not wasting space, <laughs> I think. Okay, open up the research screen and research the oxygen generator. So U for research tree, oxygen generator, allows us to build a vital building that chemically turns seawater elements into breathable air. Costs 30 credits and six days of research time. That'll go by pretty quick. Credits, we're doing pretty good. We have 2,720, or er, 70. And we can see our income. We're actually getting income from our restaurant, from our residents and our base itself i guess generates credits and then we've spent credits so far on some buildings and on research okay select and place a tidal turbine on the seabed use tab to toggle between the ground and the dome view so we got to get out of the dome view and we need to generate some electricity here you tidal turbine a construct that uses the power of sea currents to make electric energy. Electricity can only be transported via pipelines. 6x6 six six has an upkeep of 40 credits per year. That's not bad. And it gets us 80 electricity per year. And it costs 40 credits and 10 plastic. All right. We probably need to have this near the pipeline stuff, right? Bet this has to be hooked up to this pipeline. What about... I kind of don't want to be in, I guess, in the mining area. What about... About right there. Boom. Okay, continue. Okay, tutorial will continue after research is complete. I think we have to wire this guy up, so I'm going to do it. Skipping ahead. Boom. And I'm going to move our pipeline up this way and just get this guy online. Okay, we're waiting for the oxygen generator research to complete. I'm going to go ahead and speed up time. Okay. Select and place an oxygen generator on the seabed. This is another one that I believe we're going to need to have hooked up to the pipeline. 
So let's do it. Oxygen generator. Boom. And what about... How do we want to do this? How about you here? No? Doesn't like it up top. Let's look at the grid real quick. Okay, this is the mining area, I guess. We don't want to step on that too much. How about here? And then let's get that hooked up to the pipeline. So I'm gonna drag this guy over and then down. Boom. Okay, connect the dome, the tidal turbine, the oxygen generator, and a fuel refinery with a single pipeline system. So we're good. We just need to get to the dome, right? Oh man, we have to run a lot of pipeline because these things are far away. This guy doesn't need to be on the pipeline, I don't believe. Let's uh, turn this off for a second. That's our sponge collector. That doesn't seem to need to be on a pipeline, but I need to connect our dome all the way over to this guy. Let's see if we can run a huge section of pipeline. Oh man, I hope that's not too costly. Uh, four credits per length. Oh man, oh man, maybe I shouldn't have built this so far away. Oh boy. We'll see what we can do. 200 credits, yeah, we're gonna burn through some money, but we'll make use of this pipeline, hopefully. We can, uh, will it go here? No. How far will you go? Yeah, we have to get all the way over there. That's all right, we're still gonna work other buildings off of this pipeline, so I don't think it's gonna be a total waste. Okay, this guy. All right, mission accomplished. Boy, that was expensive though. We're down to 1,895 credits. Open the research screen, research the battery factory. Drones use batteries. If you run out of batteries, your drones will not be able to fulfill their tasks. Battery factory, boom, we get that researched. Oxygen generator's the last thing we did and we just put one down. This research tree, by the way, I'm gonna start scrolling. Look how big this thing is. Oh man. Oh man, there's a lot to research. Look at this thing. Tech tree much? Wow, cool, I like it. What is next? Okay, pipelines can break down from time to time. When that happens, be sure to repair the leaking sockets so your buildings can continue with production. You can quickly select the broken pipeline socket by left clicking on the notification. Over here on the left, we've got a notification that the pipeline's broke. I click it and I zoom in. We can see the leaking pipeline. We just click on it somewhere. And... Where is it? I think I'm supposed to... Oh, let me get off of this menu, the build menu. Now if I click on it, it gives me an option to repair it. Boom. Just click repair. I'm not sure what that cost us to repair it. But that's all fixed. We're back in operational. That's probably going to happen a lot. And uh, later on, I think there's maintenance drones that you can, um, you can buy that will take care of that automatically. So it's not a nuisance. All right, let's speed up time. We got two more steps of the tutorial, then we're done. Tutorial will continue after research is complete. All right, let's keep going. Research in the battery factory. Okay, done. Okay, select and place a battery factory on the tool bed. On the, on the seabed. <laughs> let's try it. Battery factory here. This can probably be anywhere. I'm not sure if this needs to be connected or not. Uh, how about here? Again, those little arrows, I'll show you. See those little arrows? I don't know if they're highlighted, what color that is, but I'm not sure if we need to have a path if that needs to stay open or not. So let's put it one off of here. I think we can still get that on the pipeline. 
Okay, this marks the end of the step-by-step -step tutorial. As a final word of advice, watch out for the notifications and warnings the game sends your way and act on challenges in a timely manner. Dear C Mayor, good luck in building a prosperous town and finishing reading this dialogue before it disappears. Cool. I like it. All right, this guy, does this need power? Let's go double speed. Guessing we need to put this on the grid. This is our battery factory. We could just do it. Kind of left this space in between the buildings purposely to have a pipeline come through here. So we can just connect this guy right in the corner. All right, we're at 1647 credits. We burned through a lot because of this huge pipeline I had to build to connect our dome. All right, we're running at single sp or double speed. Let's look at the tech tree again, see what's next. Uh, and hopefully we have the credits to do it. Okay, next we've got deco banner. Allows construction of a hologram panel that displays our faction banner, improves our resident satisfaction with the surrounding environment. We've got drone factory one, allows us to build the basic robo factors of our mechanical assistance. That's probably pretty important. Oil Imperium Combo, a fuel refinery in proximity of an oil platform gains 10% production bonus. Let's do this guy, because we have that. We have our fuel refinery, I think, right next to the oil platform, if I'm not mistaken. Get off of that. Here's our refinery. There's our oil platform. Yeah, these are close, so we'll get a production bonus when that research completes. We don't have... Oh, workers en route from HQ. Let's turn this off. Okay, we're about to get some more people coming. And let's see, Metis, okay. Food tier. We have 340, 350 food. Is that from our gatherer, I believe, might be getting that for us. That first building we placed down. What about, where was that guy? That's over here, right? Gatherer's place. So this is our, oh, new people have arrived at your colony. New Atlantis headquarters has sent them to assist us with our daily tasks. We should put them to good use as soon as possible. Sure, we'll do it. Right now we have worker assignments on automatic. Research just completed, so we should be getting a bonus now on our fuel production, I believe. Production plus 10. Nice. But yeah, I was looking at the food, thinking let's upgrade the food production if we can. Expansion 1. 40 credits, 20 sponge. We have plenty of sponge. Okay, no houses for people. That's not good. I thought we built two houses that could hold five people each. Let's take a look. Okay, there's our people. They don't need their spacesuits or their uh, underwater suits here when they're in the dome. Okay. House level one, residence two out of four. And this one, residence one out of four possible. Maybe they don't, uh, they don't necessarily all like living together kind of thing. Let's put down some more houses. We don't have house two research yet, so we're stuck with these guys. Do I have the credits to pull this off? Boom. Okay. There's two more houses being created. Okay, get out of that. And now tab to get out of that view. And again, I was thinking about Upgrading the food. Big baskets gives us a production bonus of plus 20. This is just 20 credits and 10 sponge. It seems like a no brainer, right? Let's do it. Big baskets. That gets us 20% production bonus. And then expansion one gives us another worker slot. Um. Oh, big baskets too. 
30 credits and 15 plastic. How are we doing on plastic? Uh, 130. I'm thinking... Let's do it. I'm just thinking having extra food is going to be a good thing. Credits... We get from residents as we bring new residents on. And we get from the base upgrades and trade if we can ever get to trade what about these guys okay electricity we're short on electricity let's get another turbine going and maybe we can do an array of turbines here we'll see if the terrain allows for it okay where are you production buildings tidal turbine let's just do another one right next to it then we need to hook that up to the pipeline. Drag that guy up and just connect him over. That should help with their electricity. Crude oil production is 120, requirements 80. So we're at a plus 40 balance on that. I guess I don't know if that's per year, I'm guessing. Do we need storage? Let's close that. Go back to the tech tree, see what's next. Drone factory, deco banner. Let's do drone factory. 1600 credits, I need to keep an eye on the credits. What else can we build? Public buildings, trade port, haven't unlocked this yet. Depot. Provide some storage space for resources and enables carriers to do the job more effectively. Depots serve as resource drop-offs drop off and pickup points for your workers. Okay, operated by drones. Capacity 1,000. Hmm. What, what does that cost? 50 credits, 20 plastic, and iron. We don't have any iron. Hmm. What about... Ooh, this guy's complaining about something. What's the issue? Efficiency 66%. I think it's our power. I think it's probably power. Oxygen generator. Credits 20, plastic 10. Yeah, I think once this guy comes online, we'll be okay. Yeah, that warning just left. In fact, we probably need to do another generator. Let's do it. That's gonna be a recurring issue, I think. Another tidal turbine. Can we pop you down here? No, we've got coral in the way. Okay, you will need more drones soon for all the work needed done around the colony. Build a drone factory to start producing them. Yeah, I did unlock it. I guess I should build it. What about... a tidal turbine here? I'm gonna make sure we don't run out of power. I know where that's gonna be an issue. You can come out this way and maybe hook up there. All right, they want us to build the drone production building, drone factory. Let's put you right there. And then we've got room to run a pipeline between here if we want, right? down this stretch right along here in front of it but we can connect here too let's get this guy connected up all right we've got power underway power's looking good plus 40 oil's looking okay plus 40 fuel factory we're at plus 17 Oxygen's okay. It's looking good so far. Let's go to the research tree and I guess and keep moving on that guy. Deco banner. Let's do it. 50 credits. The research isn't too expensive early on, it looks like. Okay, I'm running at double speed. We got a couple things being built. Edison seems low, but we're not using any, it looks like. We don't have clothes. Oxygen is good. Fuel looks like it could be higher, right? 
Let's see, is there a way to boost that guy? Or does it just depend on how much oil we're sending? Okay, fuel refinery. Expansion. This guy takes iron. We don't have it. Tell you what, let's gather resource. Gather all resources. And... Looks like we have some plastic or stuff here, right? There's some plastic. Let's look around for stuff that looks interesting. See piles of things on the ground. Okay, a new wave of drones has arrived to our colony. So we got three drones for free. We'll take it. Uh, is that plastic up there? No. Right now I'm just looking for resource deposits on the ground that we can harvest. I'm not sure exactly what I'm looking for, but... Uh, that looks interesting. What is this? Iron. Nice. We need that. I think that's iron. Is that what that is? Let's see. Uh, turn this off and click on it. Yeah, iron. Nice. Let's troll around for some more. Gather everything. There's some stuff. Plastic. We'll take it. Stuff here. Okay. That'll keep some drones busy. Boom, research tree, back to that. Okay, Deco Banner. Hologram that displays the faction banner improves resident satisfaction. Let's see if we can build that. I'm guessing that's in the dome. We go here, tab, housing, public buildings, shrine, trade company, clinic, School. I don't think it's there. I don't think it's a restaurant. Hmm. Not sure where Deco Banner would be. Lots of stuff to build, though. Beautification. There we go. Okay, Decoration Banner. A display showing our faction insignia improves environment sentiment. Environment points. 10 base points. Plastic iron. We have... Do we have iron yet? Not yet. We haven't harvested that deposit. We're going to have it soon. Okay, beautifications affect each other if close by. A good arrangement yields maximum environment points. Hmm. I wonder why it says de decoration banner minus five underneath there. Oh, maybe if there's two decoration banners near each other, that's not such a good thing? I'm not sure. Let's see, if we, can we place these in here? Okay, we can see the area of effect. Let's, uh... Hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure where the ideal place is to put this. Let's drop one down right here. Boom. We'll see what that does. That increases the happiness. Huh? Oh, we did get iron. We got iron. Okay, so that should be built already, maybe? We'll take it. Let's go back to the tech tree. Sea Hunter's Lodge unlocks the ability to build the central hub of our scuba hunters or plastification combo. Plastic factory in proximity of a drone factory gains a 10% production bonus. Let's do the Sea Hunter's Lodge. We'll kick that out, that research off, and then we'll wrap this episode here. And when we come back, maybe we can build that building that we're researching now, the Sea Hunter's Lodge, and then move on in the tech tree. And then uh, looks like we have a lot of resources still marked for harvesting. So our drones are going to be busy. We have a warning here, though. Let's just see what this is. I see an exclamation point. What could it be? I don't see anything running low here. What could that be? Okay, resources required in production are not arriving to this building. Well, maybe they just did. The plastic factory was complaining. This guy wants what? Sponges and fuel. Fuel's okay. Plastic production, 180 per year. Inventory, five sponges. I have a feeling it was the sponges, right? 
This guy's using sponges to create fact to create plastic. We might need um, to upgrade our sponge collector. We'll look at all that stuff next episode. But for now, this is Glidercat saying thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this series on Aquatico. Very cool looking game. I like what I see so far. The tech tree is amazing. And it looks like there are lots and lots of buildings for us to get to. Tons of production buildings. There's food production. There's security buildings. So we're going to have some threats coming pretty soon, I imagine. And what was the other one? Yeah. Uh, the housing ones. Yeah, these public buildings. Cool. I like it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.